The Dice Tower is proud to present the modern table gamer, Peter Krause. Today we're going to learn a game that at its heart is just a tile laying game, but it's themed with great strategy and the characters from a Norse poem called Voluspa. That is the title of our game, and it's designed by Scott Caputo and published by Stronghold Games. Each player draws a hand of five tiles and builds off of the starting tile in the center of the board. The center tile can be any tile except for a troll, and you're going to understand that in just a minute. I'm going to simulate just a small two-player game here while I explain the game. Each player plays tiles back and forth, and then they draw a tile at the end of their turn in most cases. When all the tiles, there's no more tiles to draw, and each player plays out their hand, so there's no tiles left to play, the game ends, and the player with the most victory points on a point track wins the game. Well, the concept is pretty simple. So I'll be green, I'll take the first turn. And our first tile out here is a Strength 2 Valkyrie. All we need to do to score points is play a tile that has a higher number or higher strength than the tiles in the row. So I'm going to play my number 4. 4 beats 2, so I win this row. I get to score this row and I get one point for each tile in the row, which gives me two points. I mark that on the scoring track. Then at the end of my turn, I draw a tile, put it in my hand. So player number two is red, they're going to play their tile. And in this case, they have a number five dragon. They place it in the row, and by the way, you can place on any side of any tile that's out here. Five beats the four and two, so five wins. Five's the highest strength in that row. Scores one, two, three points. And red puts their marker on number three. They draw a tile. So I'm going to take my turn. And the next thing I'm going to do is I got another dragon. I wouldn't score anything here because you have to beat, be the highest number. This A tie doesn't count. So I'm going to play here. And my number five beats the four. So we score two points for this column. I move two, draw a tile. My opponent says, okay, I'm going to bring out the big guns, which is the highest strength tile. That's number eight, which is Odin. Place Odin right here. Odin is the highest strength in this column. Eight beats the five, scores two points here, and also is the highest strength in this row and scores two points for that row. So one, two, three, four. And red moves one, two, three, four, beating me seven, two, four. There's another limitation here. You can't have any row or column extend beyond seven tiles. Once they have seven tiles, you can no longer build on that row or column. That's the game at its core. So, Thor and Odin are just number seven and eight, and they're just brute strength. Strong, they have no special abilities. Every other tile is gonna have a special ability, and that's where this game gets really interesting. For this example, we have a strength two Valkyrie, a strength four Wolf, and a strength seven Thor. So the next player in this case is going to show you the special ability of our dragon. In this row, the dragon can be played here. In this case, he's not going to score because Thor's 7 beats this dragon strength 5. The dragon's special ability is he can fly in and land on top of another tile. In this case, he covers Thor and now has the greatest strength out of this row and scores 3 points, one for each tile in that row moves a scoring marker. So the next player looks at that and says, okay, great. This is where the Valkyrie comes into play. Valkyrie strength two normally is pretty weak, except it has one special ability. And always check the icon that's printed on the bottom of the tile. It kind of gives you a clue as to what they do. So in this case, it shows a two at each end of a row. And that's exactly how they can score if they're not the greatest number in a row. If there's a Valkyrie on each end of a row, they would score that row. And right now, this player, the red player in this case, gets four points. One, two, three, four. And moves their scoring marker four points. So 
So moving on to green, green says, okay, I want to play a strength number three, skatey. So skatey can be played here, three beats the two, and would score two points for this column. However, in this case, skatey says, ooh, you got a Valkyrie on both ends, I am going to steal this tile. So if you look at Skatey's uh, little icon in the lower left corner of the tile, it shows that number three can swap with any other tile. So when you do that, use Skatey's special ability. She comes in, takes that tile, and you add that tile to your hand. This would be the exception where you're not going to take and draw a tile at the end of your turn. As a side note for Skatey, now, if you grab a dragon, like in this case, there's two tiles because the dragon landed on top of another tile, Skatey would get take both of those tiles. However, you only take the dragon to your hand. The tile underneath the dragon goes out of your game area. It goes back in the box. Next, our red player takes Fenrir the Wolf. And it's going to play Fenrir the Wolf right here. And we'll, normally would not score because the dragon tiles strength five. Fenrir the wolf is a strength four. However, when there's more than one wolf in a row or column, those wolves can pack together and now rather than each wolf being a strength four, they would add their strengths together. So our red player scores five points for this row because the wolf is strength eight. So we've seen some special abilities from some great heroes. Now it's time to see the villains in here. We have two of them. We're going to start with number six, the troll. If you look at the icon in the lower left corner of the troll, it shows that there's an X with every direction. What that's trying to tell you is that you can't place any other tile next to a troll except for another troll. It's a piece that causes a bit of a blockade. Loki. If you look at his icon, it shows you got a zero with all four directions. What that means is any piece that touches Loki, either to the left or right, up or down, never diagonally, turns to zero. If I place Loki here, now our Odin turns to zero and our Fenrir the Wolf turns to zero. Loki's strength is one, so he would score this column, one, two, and he'd score this row, three, four and move four points. Now that we know all the tiles, let's watch them in action.
six. Now these wolves would be worth nothing. They wouldn't add on to any other wolves because they're touching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can also like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and go to moderntablegamer.com and you can find other videos that we share from other videographers. And as usual, if you're not playing games at least once a week, the planets won't align and we'll never achieve world peace. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Yeah. Yeah.